are going to make a primary lower impression. We will select an edentulous tray as we differentiated before from edentulous tray. Now we have to choose the size, either size 2 or size 3 or size 1. I will start with size 2 to check it inside the patient mouse. I rotate the tray, I insert the tray, I stand in front of the patient mouse and I retreat, retract the cheek. We can see that it is very short at the retromolar pad on both sides. It is very short. As you see, like here, it is very short. The retromolar pad itself is very, it's not covered by the tray, as you can see here. This is the retromolar pad and this is the tray. So it is shorter than the retromolar pad, about three millimeters or four millimeters. Thus, this tray is very short. I will shift for a larger tray, which is size three. If I took the size three, I rotate the tray, I insert the tray, I look here, the tray is covering the retromolar pad here in that side and also in this side it is covering the retromolar pad in both sides it is covering if I look for the border of the tray itself the tray is a little bit overextended at the buckle side here and at the buckle side here there is no space for the material thus I have to modify the tray I'll use the scissor to cut the tray at the distal buckle area as we see before. Now I'm cutting the tray, the border that it is overextended. The other side by the same technique, just two or three millimeters to cut the tray. Be sure that the tray is not sharp at any area. If any part is sharp, cut it by the scissor. Thus the tray now is ready to take an impression. I will use the impression compound for making the impression. Don't throw the impression compound inside the rubber ball, otherwise it will stick to the rubber ball. Keep the material inside the water until it softens. I will check the material every now and then and keep kneading the material to keep it soft. Be sure that the water itself is very hot, hot, otherwise the material will not soften with you. As you see, the material starts to soften with me and I insert the area that is not soft enough inside the water to be sure that the water is hot and the material is soft. I can change the water if I feel it is not soft, it's not hot enough. I insert the compound as you see inside the water the hotter the water, the easier the material will soften. As you see, the material soft faster and I can shape it as I like. I will shape the material in a rod shape and I will distribute it inside the tray. As you see, I distribute the material all over the tray. I replace it and I will shape the material as if there is a ridge. I will shape it as if there is a ridge. I will elevate the material toward the retro, retromolar pad and to the lingual pouch. And I will decrease the amount of the compound at the lingual frenum area and also at the buccal area because the vestibule is shorter at the, ling at the buccal part than the, the lingual part. I reinsert, reinsert the material in the water and I will go to the patient mouth to record the impression. I stand in front of the patient, I rotate the tray, I insert the tray, I see the tray and I apply pressure. Then movement, the border molding upward and inward, upward and inward until the distal area. The patient has to close against my hands and I move the cheek upward and inward. The other side by the same technique. Lingually, the patient has to move the tongue while the, the tongue is still inside the patient's mouth. So that to be a normal physiological movement. Never ask the patient the, to retrude the tongue outside, the, outside his mouth. Otherwise, this is not a physiological movement. I keep seating the tray in its position by placing my fingers over the tray 
and my thumbs are holding and keeping the mandible in position. I wait until the material hardens, then I remove the impression. If we look at the impression, you will find that the border at the buckle and labial part are smooth and rounded. No metal is showing from the tray. And if we look at the lingual side, you'll see the retromolar pad is recorded in both sides. The lingual pouch by its S shape is recorded in both sides. Thus, this is an ideal impression for me. You can see the lingual pouch is recorded, recording the part of it and going up and then down to the alvilingual sulcus and to the lingual frenum. Also, at the distobacal area, the masseter influence area that is recorded by asking the patient to close against resistance, it is smooth and round and not extending horizontally at the cheek of the patient, but it is vertical and smooth and round. On both sides, it is recorded by the same technique. The thickness of the compound at the lingual side is uniform on both sides and at the buccal side. Thus, the impression itself is not shifted. Thank you.